Welcome, team, to another edition of the Rugby League Lounge Weekly Show. Once again, I am joined by Joel from League of Inches. How are you going, my friend? Yeah, good, mate. Good after a victory last night to the Mighty Blues. So it makes it a bit easier to wake up after a couple of celebrity drinks, which were always tasted sweeter. Yes, I can imagine. Um yeah, sadly, I'm sitting on the other side of the fence with this one, but I've had a few years where I've been able to enjoy a few few um few drinks on the winner's side. So I shouldn't be shouldn't be too salty, but that's why we're here. It's the Origin Review show. Um we'll meet you to do a previous preview show, but time got a bit bit behind us. And so we yeah, we've done a review. We're gonna do a review show instead. So let's get straight into it. And basically, Joel, what what's the first thing that Pops pops in your head when you think about last night's performance from a New South Wales um, fans' perspective. Just, just the enthusiasm, just the fact that it just looked like it was a, a group of players out there for the Blues that really, really enjoyed having each other around. Um, they were having fun. They were playing footy like they were having fun, which um, I think these days it can go away from that. But it was like they were, they were school kids just playing footy, Love and life, um, and Queensland just had no answers at all for it. It was, it, we did a Queensland to Queensland, really, and that's normally the Queenslanders doing that to us and showing how much passion and pride they've got for the jersey. And we finally, finally did it and showed, I think, what last year should have been. We're actually putting now to to what is actually sh- um, happening this year. I think last year was obviously a bit of a a wake up call for the Blues for a lot of the players and. Um, I think with a couple of players that were out, there was some question marks if we could do it. There was two games, obviously, to start with in Queensland. We needed to win last night. It was, it was just a must. I don't think we can. We could have gone to Suncorp already one behind. Um, it would have been too too big. Uh, but now we've got some confidence. Didn't expect the scoreline, but yeah, just a, a brilliant overall performance by a team that has all the wind in their sails now and has some absolute stars in really red hot form. And what do you think was the moment in the match? Obviously it's easy to look back at them and think, oh, it was a comfortable win. But to be fair, that first 10, 15 minutes, like I was pretty optimistic. Tell you what, I was optimistic at the 40 minute mark. You're always talking yourself into, oh, gonna be the greatest comeback. But it was pretty even Stevens early on. And what what do you think really kind of, you know, got the New South Wales the momentum? What play in particular do you think sticks out? Uh, I actually think it was off the kickoff. I think it was the first set, um, oh. which is pretty crazy to say. But the, the set where we went straight off, um, it went Teddy, Turbo, Teddy, Turbo. Um, and then I think it was Isaiah Yo, the last one. But the fact that they are two speed sort of men that smash it with the metres, obviously both fullbacks at the club land. But... I think that just showed the style of footy we wanted to play. We wanted to play up-tempo around the ruck, um, use our quick men, and just have a lot of these people like um, Teddy and Turbo floating around. And I just saw that really set the the platform for what was to come. Yeah, let's talk about Turbo. Um, I think he got awarded man of the match last night. I was in bed as soon as the whistle blew, but um, from what I've seen, he was man of the match and probably deservedly so. I probably would have him and Latrell finding out on my personal little ballot, but... Turbo, the role he played was something that I've been thinking about for a long time. Um, going a little bit kind of, it's it's not off to- off topic, but one of my favourite players of all time is Nathan Merritt. Now, why I love Nathan Merritt was he, all, even if he was winning, he was fullback, he was running around the middle. He was creating havoc, an extra support player. Now, obviously, Turbo, you know, a bit more talented than Nathan Merritt, but the ideas are similar coming off the wing or coming off the edge in this point and acting like a second forward. That's why I never got people calling for him to be forward because you can be a second forward. Even though you don't have the number one on your back, it shouldn't matter. You can play that role. So as a Queensland fan, even though it hurt, it sucked last night, the victory, I got to a point when the game was in the, you know, done and dusted, I just enjoyed the footy and thought, this is awesome. This is why I watch footy. That was great to watch. So, Tommy Turbo, man, how would you how would you describe the role he played last night, or just his performance in general? Uh, the guy's a freak, and the the funny thing about that all is is the fact that Latrell, for mine, played a wowzer of a game as well. But he's overshadowed by 
Tommy Trebojevic's performance. Any other day of the week, any other team, Latrell gets man of the match um, any time. Um, but Turbo was there and, and put the ball in a string. The fact that he was centre, and I think if you went back and watched the game, he hardly was in the centre position. Um, he was literally just the rover. It was like the good old-fashioned when you tell the, the under-10s kid because he's good just to run around like a headless chook, basically. That was sort of what he was doing. And um, Queensland hated it. They had it having the fact that Teddy and Turbo both um, around the ruck sniffing away. And Turbo's just out of this world. He's just a different class. He's uh, someone that we've got a lu- luxury of um, players at the moment in the fullback position of the Blues. And people were questioning if he should have just started and, and Teddy finally maybe got dropped or something. But the way he's playing, and you can put him anywhere. And I actually wanted him at the wing just because he could float a bit more, but I'm happy with him at centre. Um, Toe obviously made uh, for exactly the reasons why he was selected. But, yeah, Turbo for mine is just a one of a kind. Him and Cleary, I think I said it to you in a video last week, that they're the two form players. And that was the, the worry for me if I was a Queensland fan, the fact that we had two or three of the form players of the comp in our side. And... I think that just showed that the form ended up winning over. Um, you've probably selected some players there and we'll dip, dip into the Queenslanders um, a bit more shortly, but probably I mean, pick some players who weren't in great form and um, in some teams that were struggling, we worked on the opposite. We we picked from teams that were doing well. So we had a, the South Sydney combinations, we had the Penrith combinations and um, obviously Junior Paulo is playing well up the top with Para, things like that. So I think that's really big and, um, you can't underestimate that. Combinations are huge. And obviously, I'm always going to have a bias hat on when I'm predicting um, Origin Series. And I say that every time I make a post. Um, but I was confident. And one of the combinations I was wanted to focus on um, was the Melbourne Storm combination is why I did end up actually feeling pretty confident. Obviously, 50, 50 to 6. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have been so confident, but like you said on the other side, the Penrith combinations, the South combination, a reason why I thought Cody Walker should have been picked as well. Just before we kind of go into the Mel, um, the not Melbourne Storm side, side the Maroon side, let's talk about their moment that I believe kind of obviously got the Blues into the position to score their first try. And we, we've talked about him briefly, but Latrell Mitchell, an absolute redemption game and a half. And this the play in particular where he got the ball earlier and just, I forgot who it was. I think it was his club mate, Gagai, and just stood him up, just put a little bit of fend on. And for, for me, I thought Gagai was going to just easily go and shut him down before he broke stride. Nah, with ease, went down and then, yeah, we a try set later. For me, that was the play. Do you remember, obviously, only last night, probably fresh in memory, unless you had a few too many beers to remember. But um, yeah, what a, do you mean that play for me? What yeah, you- the one down the sideline um, where Coates chased him down. It was it was something where the Latrell of old came out and Latrell backs when he backs himself. That's when he plays well. That's exactly what he did in that play. And that just summed up for me the type of mood he, as well as the Blues, were in and it basically went from there. I think it was like the players went, you know what, we've got Latrell's doing these sorts of players. There was a couple other players that did some good plays in that little space and um, they went, all right, let's go. We've got him here now and, and let's take off. So Latrell was amazing. We spoke about it last week on your video about his sort of redemption story about he was sort of disappeared and needed to get his head right and, and things like that and whether people believe he should have been dropped or not, um, unfairly or not. Uh, but he's come back. He hasn't kicked stones. He looked like last night he was sending a message to say, don't do that to me again. Uh, I'm a big stage player. And um, a lot of people today have come out and obviously the comparisons with GI once again. And um, I don't want to put that sort of pressure on him because um, he's his own player. But goodness me, he can have the same impact for the for the uh, Blues that GI had for the Maroons in um, his whole uh, career, which was he just became 10 foot taller when he pulled on that jersey. I think Latrell can be the, exactly the same figure moving forward. Yeah, 100%. And I understand you don't want to put that pressure on him, but at the end of the day, the comparisons are uncanny. Um, if he doesn't reach the GI levels, that's okay. You are your own player at the end of the day. And I think people have got to realise that balance when you compare players. I'm always careful about that when I do my content. But um, yeah, it can, it can be 
pretty hard not to get carried away because but it's just the fan coming out too it's just exciting to see and brings back old memories as well um we're going to yeah because we'll talk about kind of i'll briefly talk about some positive from room like i said earlier I thought there were stages at the start of the game. I was like, right, we're in this. Um, we, I didn't think the talent disparity was too too much of a dif- difference. We had some great moments where we were, you know, some great offloads. We were creating pressure. We actually probably, I don't know about the end of the match, but it felt like we led the six again count as well. Also, great performance by the referees. Can we agree on that? They were under a lot of scrutiny, and I thought they have not been talked about enough. Um, got any comment on that just before we move on? Because I think we'd be really key for us just to talk about that. Because obviously, a lot of pressure off the head higher stuff, and Peter Villani staying pretty strong in the stance. But I thought they made the match an enjoyable, fast flowing contest last night. I think you did a great job of trying to get the Queenslanders back in it. Uh, there was a few six to goes there that I think were questionable, but um, yeah, apart from that, I think can I be honest? <laughs> apart from- can I be honest? Not not like I agree in that sense, but there was a couple ones where I was like, hang on a minute. Like, I think, yeah, we were getting the run of the calls, I believe. So, yeah, so yeah. I do. If I'm a Queensland fan, I do think yeah. we were getting the 50-50s. But overall, I think it was ref the way that I think the modern day games need to be ref is that there was no... Um, being pedantic about uh, any contact, accidental contact to the head or anything. There was no player staying down to milk a penalty. There was a little bit of push and shove, which is just the passion coming over. And there was some fire, there was some heat. Uh, but uh, the referee controlled it pretty well. Normally, I don't, I think he's one of the referees that sort of try and make it all about him sort of thing on, in the game. But he actually did it pretty well. Uh, and I can't really say too much negatives about his performance. I thought it was a good, good refereeing performance. Yeah. Yeah, and the Townsville track was beautiful as well. I definitely allowed them to play some great footy. But, um, yeah, like Maroons, they look good early. Like, well, there was a lot of positive signs there, I should say, but the execution were poor. And ultimately, when New South Wales win against us, they're that talented. The, the talent is, you guys, much, you know, for talking about superstar talent, you guys are a class above us. So when you guys win, you normally beat us good. When we win, we've got to grind it out. So when we make poor decisions, execute poorly, well, you know, you're going to see what happened last night. And a couple of players in particular was Dale Chu Evans, our own captain, taking out whoever was chasing through on that kick early penalty. Kyle Felt, what a swing play that was. That was going to be a seven-tackle set. Instead, penalty, kick, um, kick for touch, try after that. Those two players for me stick out. And also Munster, it's one of those ones where – it was a six again, didn't hear the call, chipped it early. Those were just, they killed us. And I think, yeah, for me, oh, just some brain, brain headed decisions early. Um, That one in particular with the Kyle Felt one, if you think we'd be able to start that set with seven tackles and instead we're going to be six, you know, another six points behind. Oh, was there any player in particular where you thought, like, as a New South Wales fan, like, oh, thank you, Queensland, like, you've really, you know, given us a leg up here? Uh, I don't know if it was just necessarily um, some a play. I just think it was sort of what you're you're touching on, the start of the game's obviously always a grind, that first 10, 15. I just felt like Queensland weren't prepared or, or didn't really want that at, at the time, and I think that really suited us, the fact that they didn't want to play into that. But then we had the dominant forwards. I think when you lost Welch, uh, uh, Cameron Welch, from um, that head knock for the game, I thought that was pretty crucial because he has been pretty dominant this year. I, I've rated him as one of the best props in the game so far this year. And I thought that did impact um, some of the go forward and some of the, the strength around the middle. I still also think the fact that you didn't have a, a good reserve or a good dummy half off the bench hurt because I love Harry Grant. I think, he's, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I think he's one of the best hookers in the game, if not the best. Um, but I just think he came back from having a bit of a layoff from the, the game. And I think he really started to fatigue on um, both sort of back halves of each um, half. And I still am a believer that if they had Reid, I would have started Reid Marnie start and then let Grant come on. But um, that was just my personal preference. I thought that was a worry coming into the game, having um, pushing Harry to play a full 80-minute game, especially at origin level. Um, but, look, 
it, it uh, probably wasn't the reason that they lost by that many, but there's all these little things that you never know what could have happened if it was done differently. Yeah, no, I agree. Even if Harry Grant is fully fit, I think there's a world where he's best you loss off the bench, especially when you've got Reid there who definitely would belong in this arena as well. I think for us, we looked the most dangerous when Harry Grant had the ball. And also David Fafita had some good early touches later, but had a, had an injury, he had to come off. But like you said about Christian Welch, yeah, big loss. Um, Welch, he was, was there any, um, who do you think was our best best player? I know it's hard to say, but yeah, was there anyone in particular where you thought um, even despite the loss, they should ha- hold their heads high? Uh, that's a tough one. No one really stood out, to be honest. It was sort of one of those games where, like even yeah. your monsters and that were pretty quiet. Um, you guys won each positional matchup, so it was very hard yeah. to say. No. It, it, it is it is a really, really hard one. And like I could say someone maybe like um Val Holmes was held his own, but again, he was dominated because Teddy dominated and he had he couldn't really do much. So made two errors um, later on too. I thought he was good. Yeah. He made a couple of silly errors later. Well not silly errors, but you know, yeah. Yeah, it's a hard one. No one, unfortunately, no one really stood out, which is uncommon to say in the Origin Arena. Uh, normally, each team has at least a few players that you go straight away. Yep, he was good, but I think it's probably more so a question of what changes uh, to make for you guys um, for the next one, and I guess how you guys are feeling moving ahead. Because as a as a non Queensland supporter, obviously, I would love you to keep the same team because I think you've got it a little bit wrong with some of the selections, but um, someone like Kurt Capel isn't a centre and he sort of had a bit of a, bu- got a bath on Turbo, unfortunately, but most most people these days would with the form that Turbo is in. But um, I think you move him a bit closer in and, and you bring maybe someone else with a bit more speed, um, a bit more agility who can actually handle that um, a bit better uh, out, out wide. I just don't know who you bring in though. That's the thing that's, that's one leg up you guys have is the depth. We don't have a specialist centre that I feel confident bringing in. That's the thing, you can bring in a more confident centre, but it'll be their first origin. Like I'm thinking Tom Opacek. Yeah. Like I understand your thought. I... Would, you, would you entertain this idea? Pong is obviously to come back. Um, he should be fit by game two. So you put Ponga in at, at fullback and would you push Val Holmes? I know he's been playing fullback, but could he make a centre? Could he be, become a turbo or Latrell and have that sort of figure? Because centre's not that different to, to fullback. He's obviously got a passing game and pretty good defensively. So yeah. is that something you could look at? I think that... Just, if- just have someone with a bit of speed that can actually somehow try and contain turbo. Like, it's impossible to, to say, yeah, we'll hold him up for the whole game, but someone who can at least match him speed-wise and things like that. Yeah, like you said, there's no right answer here and there's no way you're going to stop. But just the best, what's going to be the best way to counter it, you might be right, might be the guy that's the closest in the sense of just being a freak athlete and Valentine Holmes would be the guy that fits that bill. I think actually I did, I was thinking about that, you know, coming into my origin one side predictions, thinking, could we? But I thought, give Catewell the go because, well, he was, don't know if he was man the match game one last year, but he, I think he was my personal man the match or up there. He was fantastic. Um, He put on that kick try for uh, Brinson as well. Yeah, I don't know um, what you do because obviously we've had, a, we've put Moses and Bayer there in the past. Obviously, Michael Morgan's not an option, but. We've, all, we've had an issue with centres since Greg Inglis and thing. Um, I just want to give a sh- shout-out to Mo Fodawaker. I thought he was one of our strongest ones last night. Actually, yeah. 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 But probably benefited from coming on when um, the game was kind of done uh, in the sense like, yeah. Um, but, yeah, for me, and talk about forwards off the bench, Payne Haas was huge, huge for you guys as well. We will get on to, yeah, I'm just thinking about We'll get on to the selections for next game and how we can improve. Look, obviously, Papali will come in. So that's the middle forward. I'm guessing Christian Welch will be okay. Mo Fodder Waker, after being this probably the standout for us last night, who will still be in there. Look, who's the guys that ultimately drop out? I think Joe Offahengahi is probably one that drops out, um, especially when you're going to you know, bring Papalihi in. Is there anyone in particular that you think 
won't be in the side. And if you can think of any replacements, yeah, have at it as well. Uh, I think Brimson might find himself out. I don't think there's a spot for him as a bench player. He's either starting fullback or he's not in the side. Um, I think you need to then look at a bit better of a 14 type player, whether that's the the Ben Hunt mould or if it's the um, pushing Grant back and, and starting with Reed, depending on how his shoulder goes over the next couple of weeks. But um, that would be probably one of my first changes just to sort of sharpen that up. It's hard to be too critical of the spine. Obviously, as I said, Ponga does come back. So then they decide what they do with Val. Is it, a, is it a centre thing or is it pushing one of the wingers out? Which you'd probably say Coates has done enough and Felt misses out. Mm-hmm. Um, forwards, I think you do need some some forwards. But what to do? Like, I know Hess was there as 19th or 18th man, but he needs to have that old Cohen Hess form to be somewhat of a damaging ball runner, which he used to be. He's not really doing that too much this year so um it's an interesting one I mean it's it's a hard one to say but I said it to your video last week but Cherry Evans for mine was especially because he's captain if I was a Queensland fan I'm not very impressed um at first of all his leadership first uh secondly his on-field performances and and thirdly just some of his actions like you mentioned the fact that he gave away that really silly um penalty and um, some of the chats he had with the ref last night didn't really seem to make too much sense. And his post-match press conferences now, he's obviously pretty disappointed. But for mine, it just doesn't seem like he's leading or what they need at the moment. But I'm just not sure what the answer is to that. Um, obviously, over the last two or three years, you've lost a lot of um, leadership in that side. It's probably one of your big issues at the moment. But for mine, I just don't think Cherry Evans is that man at the moment. I think he's got too much going on maybe last week with the players stuff that came into it he spent too much time worrying about that as well I heard Paul Green mention in the press conference last night about the the what well, the training side of it and the build-up for Queensland wasn't great if they could do it again then they'd, they'd obviously change it which straight after a game if you already know that and obviously you know, your coach and your captain should be the first two knocking that on the head so if there's there's things like that that are happening in camp for a game one origin up at Townsville where you've just put a $8 million bid in to make sure you've got a bit of an advantage, which now you've just lost everything. You've lost the whole advantage. You've lost the momentum. You could have been going to game two to, to win the series, which we almost never win at Suncorp, so you'd almost favour you to do it. Now it's a, what do you do? And it, it's a hard one because it's game two, you need to win it. So then you go, you have to try and balance it up. How, do we make a lot of changes? Do we bring people in for their first game where it's going to be real nerve wracking. It's going to be a massive test. Yeah, there's so many question marks here. And I'm tell you what, I'm, I'm much rather be a blue right now because uh, it's a much easier uh, way moving forward. We've really got to only add one or two players and that's coming back from injury or suspension. And that's really it. Yeah. Now you got a good point and you touched on Paul Green there. It's, I was listening to the rugby league guru podcast and, it's something, you know, when you just hear stuff and it makes you feel dumb, it's like, how do I not think about that? And I just didn't think enough about Wayne Bennett not being there and also Paul Green. And then, obviously, last night. And, hey, Paul Green could make me eat my, my words and that's say right now, but in, in game two. But, yeah, I I remember when he first got selected, I wasn't wasn't too keen. Um yeah, I was putting. I was more keen for just a straight up Billy Slater first and duo to do it, um, and also just take that kind of Mal, Mal kind of coaching role. Where it's like, the, even though yes, least experienced as coaches, but you're gonna be motivated playing for Billy Slater and Jonathan first and just like Mal. And over time, they're gonna even their stature is even gonna grow within that environment. Um, with such on the Blues, you like you said. What changes are they? What changes are they going to make? And is there any? Obviously, you got the ones that will be forced through um, injury, that will be returning from injury, I should say. But are there any others that you think? No, nah, actually, we can do a little tinkering because last year, you think New South Wales uh, Queensland won first game, and I don't think they made any changes, and they lost the next game. New South Wales, not nah, all worked. Then they, then obviously they lost game three. So I don't always really think of the mindset that you shouldn't make changes because you won. There's always ways of tinkering. So we'll touch on the ones that will be the inj- the replacements you think will be made because of injuries and then touch on the ones that 
you know, think might need to be shaken up. Yeah, I think the only one I can see coming in is is Angus Crichton, obviously. Um, probably coming to starting um, in the, the back row spot. Who miss who goes back to the bench? Adam Murray and Tarek Sims. I'm not too sure there yet, but they'll obviously whoever it is will play it as a bench player. They won't be dropping out of the side because they both played so well. But he's the only one really because Radley's still out suspended for Origin two, um, and there's no one else I can really see. The, the outside backs were fantastic. The, the halves were obviously great. Cook came back and played one of his better games for a long time and. Had that running game again, which was great to see. And, yeah, the forwards, as you said, both starting and bench, Junior and, and um, Payne Haas were, were great when they came on. So uh, I wouldn't change anyone. If anything, maybe maybe change White into someone, but I wouldn't be crutching it because there's no need to. I just don't think he's a, a bench player, White, and he's either a starting 5'8 um, or he's out of the side, which he's obviously not doing that at the moment. So... Um, maybe look for a 14 option to provide a little bit more spark or provide some coverage for hooker. But yeah, I, I don't think that's a um, panic station thing. That'd be more a luxury sort of trade, if anything. Yeah, that was the one that I thought. Even when he came on, obviously, when Nathan Cleary had that cut, he came on and him and Luai had to like, they're like, you go that side, you go that side. So that was even like, that was quite cool. Um, for me, that gave me confidence as a Queensland fan. Like, oh, they even know what they're doing. They even they haven't thought about this. Um, so yeah, because that's why I thought, oh, maybe Wyden's been picked because worst worst comes to worst. Um, what's his name? If Claire gets injured, Wyden's a better fit for for um Luai. But yeah, I think they think about versatility too much with Wyden. I think I would have gone with Cody Walker, and honestly, I think I will. I would would make that change or, you know, maybe even a Coruscant because when he come on, he wasn't been able to come, you know, be able to make much of an impact the way the game went. And you're going to get to, you know, hopefully it's a tight game like we saw last year in, in those two games at Queensland 1 where um, yeah, you're going to need a bit of a spark. So that'd be what I'd, I'd make the change. I really would. Um yeah, I would make the change. I wouldn't think too much about if Cleo gets injured. I even think Walker is actually out of Wyden and Walker. Walker's played, started in an origin game at half. Wyden hasn't. So even though, yes, maybe he's a better fit next to Luai, Walker's actually the one that's actually been there before, done that. So, um, yeah, that'd be the one change I'll make. What's want to talk about Jake Shavojevic? Now, didn't, don't, didn't think he had a put bad game. Like, he played his role well, like he did 2025, 20, he was sold in there. You got so much talent, you need those older heads, those those reliable guys there just to do their job. And that's what he did. But look, it, w- it wouldn't surprise me in the next year or two, he's out. Would you think, and I think he does keep his spot, but would you entertain the idea of leaving him out on the side? For this, se- for this series? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you keep him for now. Um, I think he, he is that reliable, reliable player with uh, some finesse as a prop with the new new rules. He's obviously fit, so he can do the job. Um, he's not a big, hard-working, take the, the big hit-up type player, but he's that person that can actually do, do the, um, the hard yards and the tackling and, and keep the defence sharp. So I think for now... Um, yeah, but I, look, I, I can't agree with that. I think there's a lot of good locks at the moment for the Blues and he's definitely going to have some pressure uh, over the next year or two to, to make sure he ha- has a spot in the side. He, he might be lucky because his brother might carry him through a bit. They have a very good combination and Freddie, as long as his coach seems to love them both. And I think as, as long as Turbo's in the side, they'll have Gerbo right next to him. Yeah, because I was thinking there's a potential if... Obviously, Angus will come back. Well, I think Angus will come back in. If he comes back in, you shift him to an edge, and then you you start one of your big start either Payne Haas or Junior Paulo. That means Jakey's Jakey's out, and Murray's kind of your middle forward replacement. So that'd be a way Jake Dvorovic would miss out. But I, I don't think you'd risk it. That's one I wouldn't do. The one I would do is what we said before about the Jack Warden and um, Jack Warden's out instead of Cody Walker. Hey, I think we're going to leave it there. Unless you've got any concluding thoughts, Joel, I think we've summed it up pretty well. 
as a devastated Queensland fan and a jubilant New South Wales fan. I take the win when I can. It's good to, to live up on the sunny state and, and be happy at this time of year. It's great. Yeah, awesome. Hey, thanks, team, for listening. And thanks once again, Joel. Um, go check out his page, Lead by Inches, and I'll catch you guys next week. Cheers. Thanks, guys.